Hello, my friends. Look, it is uh, great to be back with you on this this uh, fantastic uh, video uh, attempt uh, on the, I think it's number six of my vaccine videos. And I'll be trying to update you. Look, thank you very much to everybody who's been incredibly kind about these videos. It really is uh, very generous of you and, and, and horribly dishonest because they are pretty keck handed, let's be honest. Um, but at least they're a way of getting a lot of information out there quickly. So um, as usual, I apologise for the production quality and I'll do my best to make sure that um, I get as much information to you as possible. Right, should we start? Here we go. Now look, <coughs> excuse me, crikey. Uh, that, by the way, is a cough. I've been tested three times for it uh, and it's still a cough. It's not COVID. It's just been a complete nightmare. I feel like the guy who's managed to make it all the way to the front line and to get a splinter and to be sent home is pretty rubbish, isn't it? Anyway, here we go. From around uh, the middle of January, I've been making these videos on a pretty much uh, weekly basis, and a few more if, when necessary. But this is my first for about a fortnight. And over the past few days, I've been, uh, as you can see, coughing and spluttering. So um, while I apologise, I must uh, reassure you that it is not COVID. I've had my various tests, including one actually, really, really uh, wonderful, group did it for me in the assembly halls in Tunbridge Wells, where the whole family went down. We all trooped off down and um, put swabs in our noses and throats. Uh, and it was, uh, I have to say, trying to get a, a, a six-year-old to hold still. It's only his nose, thank goodness. I don't think I'd have managed to get into his throat. I think he'd have bitten me. Um, but yeah, it, all done. So I'm delighted the family are okay. So here we go. This is Friday evening, and as ever, while I'm going to be trying to be as up-to-date as possible, things do change all the time, so please do check on my website. If you haven't got used to it, you, you'll, you'll look on there. There's a tab for the coronavirus stuff, uh, including uh, vaccinations and tests and all the rest of it. Please do go to that page. If you need any help, drop me an email. I'll send you the link. Only too easy. Now, in the past couple of weeks, a lot has happened, which I'll do my best to update you on. The first is to say that we've passed a significant landmark, half a million first doses in Kent and Medway alone. Now, that is fantastic. The achievement of, yes, the NHS, the volunteers, many, many people, and let's give it credit where it's due, uh, the government in making sure that we've had this uh, fantastic result is really, really impressive. When you break it down, it's even more uh, astonishing. Across our area of Tunbridge, Edenbridge and Morling, 5,760 over 80s have received the vaccine, 4,116 between 75 and 79, and 5,491 between 70 and 74. And guess what? 13,857 people under the age of 70. Now this is a huge relief, of course, for the individuals concerned and uh, as I'm sure I share this with many others, for those of us who have uh, relatives in those age groups, a huge relief for the families too. So I am delighted that so many people are um, being incredibly responsible. And as the Queen uh, put it, Her Majesty put it quite rightly, uh, thinking of others and making sure that they're vaccinated. Uh, so whoever it was who went and wherever it is that you went to get your jab, uh, may I just say a huge thank you. I know I've received huge amounts of praise for uh, the Baptist Church, Seven Oaks, um, the Mass Vaccination Centre, and of course Avicenna in uh, Laybourne. So, you know, thank you very much to everybody, whether you're an angel, a Baptist, uh, an Avicenna, or, or in the medical centre. It's been, it's been really remarkably uh, fantastic of you, and I'm hugely grateful. Now, at the moment, Priority group six, which is people aged uh, who are just under 64, so 60 to 64, with underlying health conditions and 16, forgive me, sorry, 16 to 64 with underlying health conditions, which puts them at greater risk, are being invited to our GP led rollout sites at Tunbridge Baptist Church, the Avicenna Medical Centre in Laybourne, and again, of course, the Seven Oaks Medical Centre. Large vaccination centres such as the Angel Centre in Tunbridge, right next to the Sainsbury's, are focusing on those aged 64 and over. However, they will soon, I hope, move on to those over 60, where letters should land in the next few days. If you haven't received yours and you are in this category, please look out for it. 
If you are over 64, then please do book your slot now. You could do so very easily. You call 119 or you do it online. And if you're in priority group six, then you will be contacted by your GP. Just wait for the call. It will come, I'm sure, very soon. If there are any issues, you know the trick. Get in touch with me. I will try and uh, group calls together, as it were, group names together, so that uh, we don't overload uh, the GPs who are busy, uh, well, incredibly busy, and the reception staff just as much as anybody else trying to get people through. Now, in the past few days, there have been some communications issues around uh, the Angel Centre mass vaccination site, especially in relation to walk-in appointments. If you have any questions about the validity of information you get, please do get in touch and I'll do my best to help you. I've spoken to the Chief Executive of Kent Community Health NHS Foundation Trust, who are running the site, and they will be making it clearer when any changes happen to the cohorts being vaccinated. But please do only turn up with an appointment. We don't want to repeat the situation where people turned up without an appointment only to, for there not to be enough vaccines on a particular day and it was a waste of everybody's time. Quite a lot of people were hanging around outside in the cold. It wasn't ideal and um, I know that everybody would prefer, prefer if it went as smoothly as it usually does. So if you're in any doubt at all, you know how to get in touch with me, please do. It's also worth saying something about the vaccine supply. A few people have mentioned this to me or commented that the vaccine locations haven't been running as frequently as they were. Now, the reason for this is down to the supply of vaccine and specifically what is happening where vaccines are being produced. When Pfizer, AstraZeneca and other suppliers had their vaccines approved, they needed to make sure they could supply as much as they could as quickly as possible. And that speed that happened at the beginning meant that there was always more efficient ways of dealing with a long-term supply. But quite rightly, the priority was on getting as much as possible, as fast as possible. Well, we're now at that point where the right thing to do is actually to slow down production a little bit in order to retune, as it were, the system and make sure we can increase production afterwards. So we're in that slight dip at the moment. And then we're going to have much greater numbers of vaccine coming out uh, in the very, very near future. So if you like to use a road analogy, this is uh, we're taking we're making a dual carriageway, a single track road during the period, uh, you know, during the, the time needed to make it into a three lane motorway. So we will get greater capacity, but we're just in that squeeze at the moment while the roadworks are going on and uh, we'll soon be out of it. Now, this will explain why sites such as the Angel Centre have closed early on occasion and our GP-led networks haven't operated as frequently as they had been in the past. However, we know this will improve from the middle of March and is something we must accept. I know it's uh, slowing things down a touch, but it really is important. And I, I'm sure we will appreciate the extraordinary work of the scientists and the pharmaceutical companies who have made this possible. We're in for the long haul with vaccinations. Uh, as you know, there are second doses that we haven't yet come to. And anyone under 60 uh, is um, without an underlying health condition still needs to get their vaccine done as soon as possible. Now, as frustrating as it is, we do need to make sure that the supply uh, in coming months increases and we have what we need for the weeks to come. Now, one area I have made strong representations to NHS England about is the need to ensure that we progress quickly through the cohorts. With GPs focusing on priority group six, we need to make sure letters are received by those in priority group seven as soon as group five is finished, and the same for groups eight and nine as well. That is the way we will manage both supply and keeping our teams as busy as they need to be. Now, this is not just a Tunbridge and Walling issue, I must emphasise. It's not even really a Kent issue, it's nationwide. And I've made the case to open up quicker where there is vaccine supply available. And I trust that they will consider doing this. Now, I hope this is a useful update. And just after recording this, we will find out the priority list once the first nine groups have been vaccinated. So I will keep an eye on that, but I'm not gonna wait until that comes out to put out this video. And as ever, I hope this is useful and I'm going to finish in my usual way of thanking everybody because, again, you know, I don't know what we'd do without you, whether you're a volunteer at the Baptist Church or a doctor at Avicenna or a nurse at Seven Oaks or one of the managing team at the Angel Centre 
whatever it is that your role has been in this uh, extraordinary time in our national life, thank you. Uh, thank you to the taxi drivers, the police officers, uh, thank you to the uh, you know supermarket staff, thank you to the scientists and to the pharmaceutical uh, company workers. You know, this has been a remarkable time and our country has really come together and actually has really come together with partners around the world too. So I must say, I'm you know very, very grateful to everyone. Please do let me know if there are any problems. You know where I am and do call if I can ever help. Thanks very much.